Numbers played a key role in Governor Mary Fallon's decision not to expand Medicaid or develop a health care exchange. She has listed uncertainty in federal funds and unknown costs to states as part of the reasons she turned down both options. Earlier, I spoke to Russell Evans, executive director and research economist with the Stephen C. Agee Economic Research and Policy Institute at Oklahoma City University, about the numbers behind the health care. Russell, it seems Governor Fallon's main objection to expanding Medicaid and setting up the state insurance exchange is cost. The health care authority predicts that the cost could be as high as $475 million over the first seven years. Is that a realistic number? Well, I think... You know, the number is as realistic as any other possible number. Uh, it comes under certain assumptions of 100% of those currently eligible but not enrolled enrolling, 100% of those who would become eligible, you know, enrolling. Uh, and so it certainly has some assumptions that I think are, are worth critically evaluating, uh, but it it's perhaps serves better as an upper bound of the maximum potential cost that the state could face. The federal government will pay 100% for the first three years. After that, no less than 90%. What are the concerns, though, about the long-term costs of the plan? Yeah, the federal dollars have to come from somewhere, right? Federal income tax collections. Uh, and I think the governor has expressed some skepticism about the ability of the federal government to maintain that sort of a match over the long run. Uh, and if you expand Medicaid the way the program would, uh, if you revert back to a, a match rate that is currently in place, it would sig be a significantly higher impact on, on state, bur state tax burdens. So I think there is some concern about whether or not the, the, it's sustainable, the match rate that the federal government is promising. There are more than 630,000 uninsured people in Oklahoma. How will they be handled without the Medicaid expansion? Yeah, so there will be about uh, you know, 200,000 who otherwise would have been eligible for the Medicaid expansion who now uh, you know, won't qualify. There will be some federal funds coming to the state by virtue of the tax credits. These tax credits will help provide insurance to some of Oklahoma's uh, uninsured for those that make anywhere from 133 to 400 percent of the federal poverty line. Uh, this constitutes three-fourths to four-fifths of the state of Oklahoma. So there will be some federal funds coming in. The real concern is about those that that will miss out on, on both programs. Because the federal uh, program presumes they'll be picked up by Medicaid expansion, there will be those in the middle that don't qualify for the Medicaid expansion and also don't qualify for the tax credits, though that uninsured population will remain uninsured. The Medicaid expansion would also include inmates, mental health patients, and many others covered by state care. How much would the state save? Yeah, so estimates are range out there, but it looks like the estimates could be anywhere from 45 to $50 million. Uh, in terms of savings of what the state currently puts out in mental health and, and prisoner uh, health maintenance. For those people. For those individuals, absolutely. How many jobs in the medical field would be created? Again, this is a hard question because the, the trade-off is the absence of the Medicaid funding, but you will get some tax credits coming in. So you have some uninsured that become insured, and that will also generate the need for additional health care uh, individuals. If you just look at the Medicaid expansion in isolation, and so you took it as sort of a worst-case scenario, just the Medicaid... Uh, expansion isolation, that could generate as many as 5,000 health care jobs, uh, the Medicaid expansion, and in addition, a, an additional 4,500 to 5,000 non-health care jobs as the economic impacts take place from that, the, that new spending of medical dollars. And you keep crunching the numbers. Russell Evans from the Minder School of Business at Oklahoma City University, thanks for joining us. Thank you.